E-mountain bikes are absolutely amazing, allowing us to travel further and faster than we ever could before. But you know what, Chris? It's not all plain sailing. So here's 10 changes to e-mountain bikes we would make. Frame only options. Okay, right, there is only a few manufacturers who currently offer a frame only option. So Specialized, Foes, and there's some of the smaller Chinese brands who do also, but that's something we could definitely do with a change on. Yeah, we'd love to see all manufacturers offering that bat a battery motor uh, package for all the bikes out there. That way I think we see loads of mountain bikers swapping their bikes out for EMTBs and saving a load of cash. And talking of cash, the initial purchase price of an e-mountain bike is a lot of cash. We're talking around £1,000 for a basic e-hardtail, all the way up to six figures for those more expensive e-superbikes. Yeah, now things are getting better because we're seeing bikes in the lower price points coming in at the same geometry as their more expensive brothers, but with like less of specs on them. So things are improving and the e-bikes are getting more accessible, mm -hmm. although that can't be said to be true for the trails. Now here in the UK, we're really lucky because you can ride your e-bike on any trail you could ride any other bike, but that is not necessarily the case for other countries. Take the USA or Canada, for example. There are trails that you can ride your e-bike on, mm -hmm. it'd be fine, but there are other trails where it would be absolutely illegal to do so. So you yeah. have to be careful. But with more and more e-bikes on the trail every single day, people are getting a lot more educated as to what e-bikes are all about. And we're seeing more and more trails open up every day. E-mountain bikes love eating drivetrains for breakfast, in particular ill-maintained ones. Now you can slow this process down by checking your chain wear with the chain tool and of course keeping it lubed up nice and lubed for each and every ride you go on. And at the end of the day, it is a crossover part from a mountain bike that perhaps isn't up to the task of powering your e-mountain bike along. That's true, but with the release of Link Glide for Shimano, we're seeing much more durable cassettes and chains. Um, so that wear and tear might be a thing of the past, and it definitely will be when you start mixing gearbox with motors. Now here's something I would love to change. Flying with an e-bike can be an absolute pain. There are currently no airlines that will accept a bike with its batteries in on a full power, e full power MTB. Ugh. Hello? Did I hear an echo? No. Just this. You've either got to send them or hire a battery when you get to the venue you're going to go and ride. So it's difficult. Yeah, definitely. That's the only way around it. Shipping your battery out there or renting one at the location is the best way around it. And don't forget, you can actually fly with some of those batteries that are up to 160 watt hours. I mean, you can fly with those range extenders on some of those lower powered bikes. Cheats, motorbikes, yeah, we've heard it all before. Coming from those people on the sides of the trails that you're probably overtaking, but those voices, they're not really worth much weight unless they're coming from people with educated views on how your e-bike works and they appreciate the effort that you do actually put in on these bikes. Yeah, and the option's really all yours when you're on an e-bike. I mean, at the end of the day, you could just turn it off and get a really hard workout out of that bike. It's still a bike. Yeah. Or you can turn it on and get all of the advantages of an e-bike out on the trail. But you know what, if someone is being a bit rude out on the trail, the best way to handle it, be polite, be courteous. We've not all got the same views and just all get along. Don't let it ruin your day. Now there's two sides of the argument when it comes to range. We're seeing batteries these days as big as 900 watt hours. Now that's almost twice the size of batteries we saw just a few years ago. And some riders like to have as much range in the tank as possible, meaning you can conquer any hill or mountain which stands in your way and whatever conditions lie ahead of you. Yeah, absolutely. But really, how many of us are running down our 700 watt hour, 900 watt hour batteries? I mean, at the end of the day, if you're a light rider or your rider just goes out for one, two hours, quick blast, mm -hmm. are you really needing those massive batteries, really? If your e-mountain bike is within the law, it's going to be governed to its assisted top speed, that being 25 kilometers per hour in the UK and 32 kilometers per hour elsewhere in the world. Now we've done lots of videos in the past showing that if you've got off-road riding right outside your front door, 25k is just about all right if you want to get to those trails. But anything that involves a bit of road work, then that limiter definitely does become a bit of a drag. And you know what? If those laws were to change, would any of us really complain? So maybe there's a change here if we could just up the limit just a little bit. 
Now, of course, we're all worried about having our pride and joys taken, and uh, with some e-bikes, it's as easy as you turn it on and off you go. You can just ride away. Now, there are manufacturers making a change to this. Bosch, for example, have got a removable head unit, and if you take that head unit away, it's paired to the bike itself. And if a head unit's not there, the bike won't go. Mm -hmm. So that's a great safety feature. Yeah, and we're definitely getting increased uh, security features from a lot of manufacturers. Revo, for example, have a fingerprint recognition on their head unit, meaning the bike won't move unless you've got the right fingerprint, much like our iPhones. I think, you know, manufacturers like Grape, they have onboard cameras, tracking. I'd love to see this widespread across all e-mountain bikes. How great would it be to be walking into a bike shop and be able to choose what motor you wanted to fit your e-mountain bike? At the minute, we're seeing the motor manufacturers using different mounts in all their different e-bike frames, meaning you're pretty much tied to what motor that manufacturer wants you to have. Yeah, absolutely. But that could all change, Chris. That could all change with a simple industry standard mount. Then we could swap out whatever motor we wanted. If there was an updated motor, we could put the new one in our bike oh. and make it brand new. Nice. That would be so great. I think one last thing I want to see changing from all these manufacturers is to stop using keys to hold your batteries in. Definitely on those off-road bikes, we don't need keys. We just need a simple six or five mil Allen key bolt. Yeah. And that way you could go out with your spare battery in your backpack and not forget your key to oh. change your battery. Not that I've done that one, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Very simple change, it would work. Definitely, but let us know what things you would like to change about e-mountain bikes. If you've left anything out from our list, get involved in the comments box down below. Give us a thumbs up if you've enjoyed today's video and make sure you check out the merch shop for all the latest kit. Cheers.